Ya. Yeah. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us um, today. Welcome to our forum this evening. Our topic for the forum is a playful com community um, centered approach in pandemic teaching. And we are going to be listening um, fr from Malaysia, Vietnam and Indonesia about the lessons that we have learned um, in about a year plus of teaching during the pandemic. So before we begin, I would like to um, thank the Pejabat Pendidikan Darul Sarawak uh, for inviting the ACES team to be part of your school transformation colloquium. And um, a special thanks to Cikgu Zul Fazli, who has been instrumental in putting together the team to be part of not one, but two panel discussions in this colloquium. So we're very grateful. So thank you very much. So um, let's begin. Um, my name, first of all, is uh, Dr. Fitri Suraya Muhammad. I'm teaching at University of Malaysia Sarawak, and I am moderating tonight's um, session. So as we know, the pandemic has increased opportunities for educators worldwide to find um, strategies yeah, to enable lesson delivery in the most effective approach. So throughout the past year, we've been searching for solution after solution to make sure that um, what, whatever that we're teaching reaches to um, our students. So the ACES project um, is an international collaboration between the United Kingdom, Malaysia, Indonesia and Vietnam and it is funded by the uh, UKRI and ESRC under the Global Challenges Research Fund. I will get Dr. JC to um, talk more about the uh, project in a little while. So um, our aim is actually to build on the empathic and um, inclusive, uh, playful and gameful research. So um, we align our project goals um, with the UN sustainability um, development goals and even with the pandemic, um, the challenges to, to uh, achieve our research goals um, has been something that we didn't really imagine when we started uh, writing the proposal really. So um, in this panel, uh, we will discuss the experiences of our research partners yeah, and, um, and the way that we have adapted to particularly teaching challenges yeah, during the pandemic. So we will share with you our knowledge um, and how we adapt with uh, what we know locally and um, how this actually creates a very unique journey in our collaboration between the three countries. So with me tonight, our ACES um, research partners from Indonesia, Malaysia and Vietnam who have been tirelessly working on constructing an educational model that we hope at the end of the project we'll be able to share with all of you that um, it will help every one of us to um, initiate social resilience yeah, among our young adults in our countries. So um, I would like to invite um, our panel members tonight to introduce yourselves. Um, perhaps we can start with um, Aldi. We're going alphabetical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Okay, everyone. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm Rahmat Ali Purnomo. You can call me Aldi. Uh, I'm researcher in Universitas Muhammadiyah Ponorogo, Indonesia, uh, who concern about applied economics and also co-authors a uh, number of uh, research paper and have article published in various journal. Uh, I'm part of international project in ISIS, which investigating the impact of transformative educational through playful approach and experience toward developing social resilience uh, target young people in Indonesia. Uh, I'm economist uh, with support global program that imagines and um, activates new form of cultural and economic agency and also by placing creativity, experimentation for design, social purpose, action research, uh, and then international connection uh, at the heart of its work with these overseas partnerships like um, Malaysia, Vietnam, United Kingdom, and Australia. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you so much, Audi. Um, can we move on to Fadli? Silicon. Thanks. Uh, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Muhibuddin Fadli. You might call me uh, Fadli or Muhib. I work at uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah Ponorogo 
in East Java Province, Indonesia. I have uh, extremely concerned about LHL development. My field is instructional technology uh, for LHL development. And I have uh, so many uh, papers that published in so many journals too. And this current project is with uh, Fitri, Jesse, and our team in, in this Zoom. And this project called ACES and a community-centered educational model for developing social resilience. And this project is targeting and investigating the impact of transformative education through valuable approaches and experiences towards developing social resilience, especially this current pandemic. So this research quite quite interesting to develop and implement in our nation in Indonesia. Thank you, Fitri. Terima kasih. Um, Floriana, can you go next? Hi, uh, um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I, my name is Floriana. I'm actually working for University of Malaysia, Sarawak. Um, so my, my, my feel is that um, I focus a lot on works that is related to sustainable development goals. So it could be ranging from SDG 2, uh, 3, 4, 11, but most, most of the focus is on SDG 4 and SDG 11. So my work is, it could be directly or indirectly um, uh, related to anything to do with community uh, sustainability. So it could be developing index to access, you know, how we're we doing. And also it could be uh, in terms of intervention of okay, how can we improve um, the way things are that is in relation to sustainable development goals. And I have, um, you know, being in ASSIS team, uh, it has definitely sparked even more interest uh, in terms of the social resilience of, of the community, uh, especially at um, the local context that, that we're in right now. And, um, and I would like to uh, explore more on education inclusiveness because um, this is the way to go and making sure that everyone gets to uh, experience education Education, no education, you know, um, no matter where they are, uh, how old they are, um, in, uh, which, whichever um, social income, economic, socioeconomic they are from. Um, so I want to make sure that like, we will be able to work more on that, making sure that it's accessible to, to everyone and not just Malaysia, even, even anywhere around the world. And this is why I feel like SS is one of the, um, how to say, it, a, a very has a significant impact um, in terms of the work related to the community. Uh, thank you, Fitri. Thank you so much, uh, Florena. Uh, JC, we're going to go to you next. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, JC. I am from uh, University of Malaysia, Sarawak. I am actually a computer scientist. Uh, measuring in the area of uh, statistical discriminant analysis or the big term these days is data science, data analytics, uh, but mainly focusing in the area of statistics. Um, yes, I do coding, and but those are easy. Uh, the other interest that I have is that um, myself, I have experienced that, you know, as we get a lot of students into the university, they have problems understanding logic thinking, they are unable to code. It's, it's not too much because of uh, the different codes they are using or scripts, but it's more of the thinking that is lacking. And this interest uh, myself and my team to actually look at these thinking models. Uh, what are the various thinking models that we can ignite to get students, uh, youth, or even adults to actually know how to think. And I think thinking is lacking. Uh, regardless of what field you're in, thinking is very important. So this is another part of uh, an interest that I am looking at, this, this research interest. Um, also by incorporating play into the thinking because play you allow ones to collaborate, you allow ones to talk, you allow ones to build. Uh, so you use all your senses, including your hands. Uh, so yeah, so that's roughly my interest. I'm not moving away from computer science, neither am I being um, 
being a philosophical person in into looking at thinking model but i think having a nice merge in these two will actually build a better community hopefully that's our aim lah. yeah thank you all right thank you jc uh, can we go to Tui? morning uh, everybody i'm uh, Thuy, uh, Hoàng Thị Bích Thuy, call me Thuy. Uh, as, uh, as JC, I'm an engineer, but I, I am uh, working on uh, chemical engineering. I'm from the Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And um, with uh, more than 20 years of teaching and doing research, uh, uh, in chemical engineering. Uh, recently, I, I uh, also work uh, on uh, the uh, innovation and uh, transformational entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, now it is my, um, I, I uh, am very lucky uh, to um, work in the ISS project and uh, um, working with uh, other colleagues from Malaysia and Indonesia, and and um, I learn a lot from uh, um, educators like you. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much, Dui. Uh, Tom Tom, your turn now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm very happy to be the last to say Xin Chào. Xin chào, it is Vietnamese word for hello. And uh, my name is Nguyễn Thị Thơm Thơm. And normally you can call me Tom Tom or the children often call me Miss Pineapple because that is the meaning of my name in Vietnamese. And um, uh, I am a lecturer, actually a teacher educator at Vietnam National University uh, based in Hanoi. Uh, and uh, I'm also a master trainer in a range of teacher training projects and we provide professional development programs for teachers across educational levels. And um, uh, in uh, many of the outreach, outreach programs on projects, I normally act as an academic manager or the key researcher. And most of the projects are community-based. And um, uh, I am also very happy and it is my great honor to be part of the ASAS team and actually well, when I first joined the team, um, I didn't expect it to be uh, as it is nowadays, as it is today. And we actually have enjoyed our journey. And I always say to my team members and also to the children that um, uh, when we join the ASS, we have become assessors. We, we use the word assessors and we, we want the children to assess um, educational approaches that involves playful um, school, frugal STEM in Vietnam. And we also have the idea of um, playful playground, even the, um, the physical playful playground or the virtual playful uh, playground. But what we mean is that we, uh, we don't see it as a, a journey to, just a journey to happiness, but we try to value every single moment we are together. Uh, you know that because during the pandemic time, well, it's a chance for us to look back and to reflect on uh, the, the objectives of education. Um, I do believe that you know, with education, we can transform, we can learn to do, we can learn to collaborate, we can learn to work, but finally we can learn to be ourselves so that we can be adaptive to the situation. And uh, that is why social resilience or global skills, 21st century skills, or the SDGs um, are the, the, the fundamental factors that we need to take into consideration. And uh, from that perspective, I move on from being a teacher educator to um, a researcher. And then now I think uh, more like, um, how do you say, a, a social worker or something like that, um, you know, and I'm very happy to say, um, to say that joining the ASS team, I, be, I have become to discover myself 
as well. And now I, be, I become much happier. And whenever we meet the ASS teams, we smile, we, we keep talking and we feel relaxed. And um, that's why I think um, it is, um, I'm on the right track. And I'm happy to be here today to share uh, our experience, not just in research, not just in um, um, what we have been doing, but maybe in some future trajectories. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now you've heard from all of our six panelists um, today. Um, I would like to invite Dr. JC, if you don't mind, JC, to explain a little bit about our project. So um, people will probably um, be interested to participate, you know, and, and uh, maybe to become one of our case studies. Please, uh, your, the floor is yours. Right. Uh, thank you. I uh, will share a slide so everyone could also have a look at it. Um, just two slides, so I'm not going to take too much uh, time. So ACES um, is, is a project. It, it, its name is extremely long, as you can see. So I think from all the explanations, you know, uh, from all the different team members um, today, uh, that literally just covered what ACES is. Uh, it's a community, and we are all interested in education. And the aim is always looking at resilience. And when we talk about resilience, we look at uh, building what, what sort of resilience is a community resilient, students resilience, youth resilience, parents resilience, uh, teachers to be resilient. And then we do not want anyone to be missed out. We're looking at using playfulness approach. Playful may sound uh, perhaps only for kids, but everyone plays, uh, even when you cook, you, you play. So perhaps cooking would be different sort of play, but when we talk about playfulness and baking, you will be experimenting. So that's one sort of uh, indicators perhaps, or one sort of factors of playfulness when you start experimenting the different types of cooking. Uh, and uh, we also look at building uh, a safe society because when one community is resilient, so uh, safe community is, is becoming lesser these days, especially with the pandemic. Uh, we got a lot of social issues. So I think when we, we got the, the fund, uh, there was no pandemic uh, when we got this. And we were thinking, how are we going to build a social resilience community? And just as we got the news of our fund, uh, Wuhan happened. And then we see the gaps gets bigger. And what sort of gaps is the community, the lack of inclusive, the lack of, there, there is no equality. Uh, so that makes it very obvious. And this project comes very much in line. Uh, so we aim to, of course, hit the core of all this, uh, resilient societies, intelligent societies, 21st century, you name all these big words, but the root of it is actually education. So we're looking at how we can transform education. So the current education is still useful. You look at the pandemic, is still, it, it, is it uh, just duplicating how we teach before the pandemic? And doing it the same way, but just in front of the screen, is, is that the best way? Is there any approach that we can use or can we, well, I wanted to use the word edit and modify and, and transform. So I, I think this is, I, it would be a quite interesting talk as well today because it, it fits in nicely into this, this project. And of course, uh, we look at social resilience through play and we look at youth. So those who are listening to us, uh, we're, we're calling out a lot of youth, uh, young people. Uh, it can be teenagers, it can be students. No one is going to be left behind. And we're very much interested in teachers from Malaysia, Vietnam and Indonesia. And if this opens up to the whole world, yes, we welcome everyone, not just in these three countries. And we wish to align our project uh, with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah, so we're looking at the root of it is building and transform a quality education. 
and then um, and we look at gender, improving poverty. So again, yes, we want to look at not just formal education, but informal education. We're looking at co curriculum, building this uh, safe learning space. Okay. So these are our main principles on the ACES project. We have a, we work with communities, we collaborate with communities, we experiment uh, learning, we experiment education using playful approach and even frugal. If you don't have technology, that's fine. It doesn't mean that you cannot learn. So with, in this ACES project, you can use sand, you can use pebbles, and you still can learn. Uh, then we look at the outcome of all this, where the resilience. So resilience is such a big word. Uh, what is resilience? Now, we would see this uh, in our life in these one, two years. How did we cope over the pandemic? Have we adapted? Have we improved? Have we changed? Or have we given up? But if we are still here and listening to this this panel talk, it means that you, every one of us has survived and we're very resilient in our heart, in our mind, and in our attitude because we want to change, uh, we and change in terms of our experience and to, to grow as well. So that's roughly about ACES. So I'm trying to relate it to our life because it's, uh, the ACES project is not something new, but it's something that is living. Yeah, so I hope that explains, but we do call teachers. Students, please join us if you're interested. Yep. All right, thank you, Dr. Yeah. GC. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, yes, and uh, what we are doing in, in this project really is um, over over the, the next, I think we have another year and a half um, to, to build together an educational model that can be um, used yeah in not just in our three countries but also perhaps in 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 many more countries uh in in the global south so um we are hoping that uh, we can get input from everyone so that uh, we can make this relevant to people and to make it um what do you call it uh, uh replicable yeah in in many many contexts so um to get on with the questions that i have uh, prepared for the panel um let's see let me pull out this, the slides here and i'm i'm just gonna call you guys um uh, what do you call it um one at a time if you don't mind okay there you go we'll start with aldi first yeah aldi the first question um all right can you see this aldi Yep, perfect. All right, Tilikan. What what is the current scenario that you have um, in Indonesia, and how has that affected the way that you guys are teaching in the past year? Can you share with us? Okay. Um. Thank you, Vitri. And yeah, according to the uh, Ministry of Education, uh, in Indonesia, uh, the education process in Indonesia and to instill the values of the Indonesian nation character, uh, including nationalism, integrity, independence, and also religion, and um, yeah, so much value of cooperation in study. Um, uh, since the beginning of the um, COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia, in uh, you know, early March 2020 in Indonesia, uh, thanks to the learning system, have been made and you know are currently underway across the country. Um, yeah, this is done by the government to maintain the quality of the um, nation education, I think, and all system components are involved, uh, including the student and you know, change in learning situation and condition suddenly cause students to have a resilient spirit and a high fighting mentally in the learning process. And which, you know, is so much different from the previous one. Uh, I'm as university education, and we, uh, I think, must do, you know, adjust the learning method and make some improvement to maintain the resilient level of the student. And that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you, Fitri. 
Thank you very much, Aldi. Um, Fadli, do you want to add on to that? Uh, perfect. <clears throat> I will. I will. Uh, continue to add the explanation that uh, after COVID nineteen pandemic hit our country in Indonesia, so the government have so many layer of the policy of education. Mm -hmm. So in the, in the term of uh, the, the national education now is the Merdeka Belajar or Freedom of Learning by our Ministry of Education, uh, Mr. Nadim Makarim. So in this context, in the obstacle of COVID-19 pandemic, we have four, four criteria that, 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 that the government have implemented. One is replace the national standard school examination. Mm -hmm. So before the pandemic, uh, so many schools have to take the exam. Mm -hmm. They have so many criteria that they have to pass so many criteria. But in this pandemic, uh, our government have replaced the national standard school examination. Mm -hmm. So the national standard school examination so far determined the graduation of school students. School are completely free to make examination autonomously. Mm -hmm. So this is the impact of pandemic. <laughs> so the second is... Uh, after replace the national standard school. So the second is remove of the national examination. So the national examination uh, substitute will be held in the middle of the level, not at the end of the like uh, the current, yes, national examination. Third is uh, one seat, only one seat of lesson plan. The lesson plan has so far so many, so many, so many papers. So Check identity, common standards, basic competencies, basic material, and time allocation, and then is completely simplified into only one seat. So in the in the last is loosen zoning. So the zonation in our country is completely important during this pandemic because the students in one location have to choose the local school. They don't have any access to abroad. So uh, this is the the good policy because school are equal. So uh, access, uh, access uh, in this context, uh, want to know about how this global pandemic impact our education in, in this current situation. So we can discuss uh, so many uh, students, teachers have impact with this, with this pandemic, especially in the uh, learning process in school. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, that's that's quite interesting the way that um, you know the, the the country has adapted to um, the assessments, particularly, and yes. and uh, we did the same thing here in in Malaysia as well. Uh, we scraped off um, two national exams as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm I'm quite interested to find out about the um, lesson plans. You said the lesson plans are yeah. um, only, only one. Only one seat. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's shared by all teachers across the country. Yes. Yeah. From the early to 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 high school, uh, Fitri. So this completely different with with my uh my lesson in my university in maybe in four years ago. So we've got a lot of uh, papers. We have to write about eleven to uh, fifteen uh seats. But yeah. uh, for this uh pandemic, the we have we just take only one seat. With, with the with simple tables yeah yep. okay brilliant thank you um floriana You're very welcome do, do you want Hello, to hi hi do you want to talk <laughs> about your experience uh with your students yeah um well yeah i think the biggest um changes you know i would say that i mean i one of the course that i'm teaching is project management right and um so project management is a community best uh course where every year the students will go down to the ground and they will do a project together with the community and we will assess them best on how they plan the project right uh but this time you know we had uh Last year, the first time, the last year before, I had this idea of working together with the SS team to come up with uh, a project for for the class. Um, it was a bit hard. It was a bit hard because it was um, in the middle of the semester. You know, the semester starts, and the next thing we know, oh, you know, we cannot go. We got MCO, and you know, we cannot meet each other. And then I remember that we have to change the project five times five times <laughs> and uh, 
towards the end, we, we managed to do it, but uh, it's just mostly in the form of a video. But so the interactions with the community is, I would say, um, not not as as much as I would want it to be. Um, so, but then we we did what we can to survive that semester. So when this 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 semester uh, start right, and I, I was talking to 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 Fitri and Jesse, I'm like. Maybe we should do something. <laughs> Let's do something with the students. You know, like we can't, we can't, we can't keep using MCO or all this as an excuse not to not to do something for the community. So we decided to uh, come up with a project. Okay, and you have to know that every students are in different location in Malaysia. It's from every different state. We have students everywhere, and they all have to work together they're split into groups based on the localities you know so that it's easier for them to those they can meet up they will meet up but those they are they can have to do online they would do online but we also came up with a third option for them where they can do hybrid like some will be with the with the with the students with the community some will do it online depending on where they are and that has actually train us to be more resilient in a way that uh, we have to be flexible, uh, adaptable to how situation is. And, and I think my students, right, they, they, they learn that, you know, sometimes we do plan things, I mean, it doesn't turn out to be the way we wanted, but it doesn't mean that it's any less better than what we could have wanted to plan. Uh, that, that in my teaching experience is a big lesson for myself. Like education, learning doesn't stop because of um because of covid or because if there's anything else that would come out in the future you know that that we will stop what we're doing so i think um as a university educator it is very important for us to be uh more uh creative in in how, in how we conduct our classes and it's all dependent on us so we have the tools we have zoom okay i, I remember the first time that i i learned to use Zoom, right? I the only thing I know is to just okay, just use it, log in, and just go in. And as time goes by, I have to learn. Okay, how do I be, how do I get more and more creative? And now one year, one year being in this situation, I got used to it already. So it will lead to Zoom fatigue. Like I would have to admit that, like it's not all flowers and you know beds of roses and stuff. Uh, but uh, I would have to remind myself that um, we have to do it. You know it has to be done um and then just i just wish wish that you know uh, more things that could be done and more people would be more involved um in 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 this in this creative uh teaching you know and there is always a way for us to to change the way we teach um even for one of my course that we're doing on in osh all right so we change it to a gamification um, assessment so they have stages that they have to to do they have to go through stage one in order for them to do stage two they have to finish stage two in order for them to do stage three and if they want to skip certain tasks they have to collect points you know and in order for them to, for them to collect points they have to do additional quiz in order for them to do additional quiz you know uh you there's a lot of things and it's, it, we make it like a little bit more fun for them you know like for example there's certain tasks that okay where some people they don't like to do live session or presentation uh, you want to skip this i said you can but you got to get points for this you know so so some of them they will go for it or some of them they don't like recording they prefer live you know so you get to see different uh different type of characters from the students um but this one i worked together with my with my co-partner mr halim and and he's actually one of he he, he he was the one who started the idea of this gamification of occupational safety and health and, and this osh in an in the all normal <laughs> in the all normal usually the students have to go down to the ground and do some risk assessment but now it's hard for them to go out to go down to the ground and everything has to be done virtually but it it it, it fits i mean it serves the purpose and this semester i would say um the most interesting <laughs> semester that i've ever experienced in the whole past eight years of me teaching in the university uh, over to you Fishri. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I, I want to pick up your point on um, the, what do you call it, the persistence that we need to have in order to, um, you know, to, to make sure things are going anyway. Yeah, like, like what you said, you know, coming into Zoom for the first time, it's, it's quite scary. <laughs> maybe a lot of us are um, used to using Skype before this and maybe, maybe Google Meet as well. 
but um, using it as the main platform to um, what do you call it to teach and to reach out to students it's 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 a different ball game altogether isn't it how, how was it in in vietnam what what was your um, experience in vietnam uh, tui Yes, in Vietnam, we, uh, uh, I think we have a bit different uh, to um, your country. Um, yes, in Vietnam, the last year we uh, were lucky because uh, COVID just uh, came in and went, <laughs> came and went. So it's like a way, you see. So we, so we have um, uh, transformed to like a hybrid teaching. Uh, sometimes uh, online teaching and sometimes we have offline. So the, that, that was good because the, uh, um, the students have a theoretical class and also they have a practical class. So uh, we uh, rearrange uh, the plan. So to, as, um, but you know, the, the workload for the um, lecturer in uh, <laughs> when they have offline, it, it takes time and we do all the class in the weekend and even in the evening also. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, um, it's um, uh, last, last year it was lucky that we uh, can finish the, the academic year uh, like as you. But this year is more difficult. And, and um, I see uh, for the students that they uh, now they like used to uh, uh, online teaching and they uh, spend more time on uh, self study. And, um, uh, for the, you know, for some students. Some students, when they uh, live in uh, rural and, or remote area, is uh, uh, not uh, easy to access uh, to uh, the online, and so so that the uh, I think the the way they learn, they they have to adapt to to the new um, new context, new normal, yes, to um, get a, a good result. Yeah, um, but this year also we we have to delay the the time. But yeah, and it depends on COVID. <laughs> it's not so nice. But, uh, we have to. Yeah, thank you. It's um. You're, you're, you're quite right. I remember uh when we saw pictures from you from videos. Uh, you guys had all the normal classes yeah. in the first yeah. uh, the first few months, and and I guess after that, then everybody started to um, do things in hybrid, isn't it? Um, yeah. Is it is it yeah. different for you, uh, Tom, when as as a teacher educator, um, for you to be training teachers um, online instead of you know meeting them face to face? Yeah. Um, actually, um, I'm not a kind of technolo technological uh, expert. Uh, you know that now when the pandemic um, occurred last year, we we were not very well prepared for that, and we was um, uh, we uh, the teachers like me or teacher educators like me will normally get got shocked because when we thought of online learning and online training. We would think of the case that the students would be, uh, we call them the, the ghost, uh, mostly silent during the lessons. And we were scared because um, uh, as a teacher trainer, normally we meet, I meet with a lot of my students or the teachers and we go to the classroom, we have the site visits and we can observe them. But now we cannot do that. So um, well, I, I was very a little bit shocked and scared at that time, but gradually uh, due to because of the situation in Vietnam, uh, sometimes we have the uh, social di distancing, but sometimes not. So we have time to get used to and adapt to the situation. And gradually, um, I, I can see it like, because I'm a kind of challenge appraisal. So um, I see it as a kind of advantage for me 
to uh, uh, get used to the situation. And um, now I, um, I'm proud to say that I become a tech savvy and um, I uh, transformed from being a teacher or a lecturer into kind of facilitator and uh, sometimes the mentor or the coach. So it means that I have changed from my conventional roles of a teacher to um, adjust the roles during the pandemic time. But the situation in Vietnam at the moment um, is unpredictable, I can say so, uh, because this year, we most of the um, uh, schools in Vietnam haven't uh, completed uh, yet. Uh, and uh, even with our national examination, uh, the graduation examination, we divide them into two phases. And for the first phase, it was okay, but in Ho Chi Minh City and um, other provinces uh, which are suffering from the outbreak of the uh, COVID-19 at the moment. Uh, the, um, uh, there, is a, there is some delay in the examination and we do not know exactly when the exam uh, could be, uh, will be taken, uh, will be organized. And um, I'm still wondering whether the government or the education or the experts uh, thinking of making online examination because it's still a very big question and a big uh, um, topic of debate in Vietnam. Uh, but in the university, uh, there's not much uh, difference from um, in our case now. Uh, for example, in my university, we um, we we all agree that in the in the coming year. So online is a must and online blended hybrid or any case we are responsive to that. So that's the case in the in Vietnam and in my situation. That's that's very interesting. It's it's um, what you call it. We we are kind of like forced to um, make the changes, whether we like it or not, isn't it? And I think we may have to live with this. Um, you know, different way of approaching um, yeah. for, for quite a while after this. So um, this, which brings me to the second question that I have for you all. Um, in what ways do you believe that play can be used and, as an approach um, to address teaching during this pandemic? So maybe I will start with um, Fadli first. Yeah, Thank you, Fitri. Yeah. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, children is in a period of playing spontaneously. Why? Because they will do playing activities without any orders from anyone. That's the key. So, uh, so many children play, they will be motivated by themselves to do game, to do play naturally. A lot of study of playing was also revealed that playing is part of children's life. So uh, they have a lot of energy. So they have a lot of energy. So they so playing is one of part of the activities to have so many energy to be implemented. So playing contributes to children to know their environment and then interact socially and then sometimes master languages, master new languages, and then uh, of course mature the physical motoric of the children and teach children about social norms. So in this uh, current pandemic, uh, our SS team have implemented uh, with the two terms. One term is in the uh, rural areas, uh, and then in the second term is in the urban uh, areas. So in the rural areas, uh, we don't have any internet connection in there. So the best, the best way is a uh, come to there, uh, and then have an offline workshop in there. And then uh, we can see the interaction with, with the students and the teachers in the rural areas as quite uh, interesting with the student and, and, and teacher itself. So thanks to our volunteers, we have a volunteer also in our rural areas, about eight volunteers uh, uh, teach in there with about uh, 50 students, uh, primary students in, in there. Uh, second is in the urban areas, because in this situation, a lot of you know, uh, mobility uh, prohibit 
to 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 the city so so of course we do online with with the volunteers also but in this context we have an online interaction with with the urban uh, areas because some of the students in urban areas have activities uh, uh, especially play uh, we do online with the kahoot and then quizzes and then sometimes we do and, and then and then myro too to have uh, interaction with them and the next is uh, with our volunteers in rural areas is we just have any uh, offline interaction and then uh, we've got so many workshop in there so that's 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 all the activities that we can implement during this this pandemic in terms of uh, playing over to you Fitri thanks all right, thank you. Um, Aldi, I, I want to ask, um, when, do you think uh, play is effective as an approach for teaching, you know, complex um, subjects like what you're teaching in economics? Um, in my perspective, uh, of course, in pandemic era, uh, um education, especially in economics, should be not only for economics, I think, uh, the education uh, should be a process to humanize humans, you know what I mean? Uh, so the process must emphasize to freedom of children to choose something according to their desires and potential. Um, education patterns that, you know, focus on test results, uh, scores, and so on, because, you know, in economics uh, approach, it's a lot of, you know, test results, scores, and yeah, something like that. Um, and then uh, it sort of begin to the direct toward, you know, like innovation, co-creativity, and yeah, as Fadli say, I agree with Fadli, full of fun, full of fun, I mean, uh, play methods and something like that to, you know, achieve learning objective and, you know, not be a burden, I think. And this can also be supported by the presentation of the community, like, what we say, um, uh, Aces Ambassador, uh, AKA Solo Mangajar, and yeah, to, you know, obtaining information. And I'm just continuing, I think, uh, Fitri, about the uh, example uh, of the uh, Indonesia STEM concept. Uh, what is Indonesia STEM concept? Uh, Indonesia STEM concept uh, developed in Aces project uh, used through the materials of one according, you know, to the host environment uh, and yeah, something like that and teaching scientific concept with, you know, transformative educational models and for bridging formal and informal educational, like uh, what we say in rural area and then in urban area and the uh, informal educational context uh, through playful and participatory methods, you know, toward a more inclusive and safe and yeah, resilient social, society as well. And uh, I think it will empower young people uh, to develop despite their, their social localized. Um, and also, um, yeah, I'm just thinking about the, uh, what um, Flo say that of the um, SDGs, the, this Indonesian STEM, STEM concept can capture uh, the role of education in mobilizing young people uh, toward achieving sustainable development goals, uh, you know, taking into account to the impact of well-being, SDG 3, gender, SDG 5, and also poverty, uh, SDG 1, and yeah, of course, education, SDG 4. And, our Indonesian STEM concept uh, will focus on building resilient communities and have been building resilient communities of the uh, young people in rural area and urban area as Padli says, and um, also uh, communities uh, through education. And STEM concept will and have been engaged teacher, uh, aka as ambassador Indonesia uh, and local community in um, Merdeka Belajar, a group into the um, co-creation and 
ownership to the uh, educational process, fostering and empowering also and agentic practice when it comes to the marginal context, you know, to motivate, grow, and um, most importantly, localize the invention. Yep. Thank you, Fitri. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's fantastic um, in that uh, we are, you know, with the pandemic, actually, it, it makes us think about how we can come up with um, different solutions and different approaches to our students who are um, in the urban and also in the rural areas, uh, particularly when you know that you know uh, connectivity is is an issue. Yeah, um, sometimes in even in the urban areas, um, it doesn't mean that you know the students who have devices have the connectivity. They would be able to also engage just as how they would, you know, pre-pandemic. So um, I think we saw this in our, our classes as well, isn't it? And, and, and we um, um, made changes and we make adaptations as we go along. Um, I, in the interest of time, um, I would like to get JC and Floriana to comment on this. Um, do, do you guys use play in your classes? Um, do I use play? Let's let, I can I can share on tools. Uh, there are plenty of tools. Um, a lot would say yes. Your computer science using technology is not a problem in teaching, especially during pandemic. But it's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, we use computer tools as a tool, not not well. Of course, to teach, but we teach programming. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to pandemic, it's very different. Uh, how are you going to teach programming? How are you going to incorporate play in the programming process? So I think, you know, um, uh, one has to be creative is a big word, but I think one has to be very bold yeah. to, to change. And then do we use play? Yes. Uh, I will only speak on the technology part. Uh, there are plenty of tools available in the internet. Uh, you, you, if you do not know how to create, for example, crosswords uh, puzzles, uh, you can always Google crossword puzzles generator and you give all your answers, solutions, questions, and it will generate it for you. Uh, if you look for maze or any game, you just look for the name of the game with the generator. And there is also tools that you can use to create collaboration, get students to speak. The early days of the pandemic, students speak, but uh, they would talk to one another. But we have students who enter university that have never met. They don't even want to switch on the camera. They don't even talk to one another. And I think that's not a good sign. So one way is we use collaborative tools. For example, we've used Miro, we've used Padlets. And then nothing, you, you can't do much in terms of programming. Perhaps I'm not that clever to think of uh, coding in using this, but it depends on what is the aim. So in my case, the aim is to get teachers to talk to one another. So questions that you post, keep it simple and get them to talk to one another and work together to solve the certain uh, problems that they're facing. And then play can also be incorporated, just so happen uh, that I'm also working on a game and uh, I love escape room, I love treasure hunts and one would think that, oh, you need to do face to face to do treasure hunting or escape room. It's, it's not necessarily anymore. You can also do it online. You can use uh, a software called a tool. These are free tools. Yeah, you can use a uh, great, um, I forgot what it is, Genially. Or you can even use simple PowerPoint. It takes time to learn. It's not going to be like that with a click of your fingers and then magic happens. I think the learning process has to come in. And then one don't need to fear because I, I'm also going through all this. And I had to Google uh, lessons, uh, read on how can I create a simple game how can I create this sort of effects, that sort of effects. Uh, so if we allow ourselves to play and explore in coming up with lessons that is playful for the kids, I don't, I don't think that is the problem because for myself personally, uh, the pandemic 
isn't um, helpful, but I think the university uh, did a right move perhaps because when we were teaching pandemic, uh, MCO happens, MCO is like the lockdown and teaching was halted for a few months. And that gave us a lot of time to attend a lot of online uh, teaching and learning. And then we tried to pick up as much and see how we can incorporate. So do I believe that it can be used? Uh, yes, you can. If you have a chance to do face-to-face, -face, I think it's a lot easier. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have chance to do face-to-face -face and using technology, I, I think it works as well. Yeah. That's on my side. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'll answer straight. Like, in what ways do you believe place can be used in the approach to teach during the pandemic? Just like what JC said just now, I actually learned a few from SS team, you know. One of the one of the tools that I find very useful and it gets the student to be aware and awake uh, during uh, the lesson would be Miro. Okay, Miro, Miro. Uh, you can call it any in either way. Um, it's because, you see, you get to see what they're doing in the live station and I sometimes share my screen to tell them that hey I know what you're doing here and I'll send some screenshot into the group chat so they know that I am with them and while doing the Miro I split it into breakout rooms so sometimes it'll be a little bit difficult for them to do discussion with me around so I'll get them to to, to be in the breakout rooms and I guess that's how they could actually uh, how to say it, it helps them to, to talk more and, and communicate with, with the members. Um, so one of the ways is my role, okay? And then the second thing that I, I enjoy doing is that um, I will always tell them to first read in advance before you enter in the class. Then I'll give them some Kahoot games, you know, very... Kahoot has been used even before pandemic, okay? And that was like, I can see that my my, my, my my students has always enjoyed Kahoot, but doing it online is another level <laughs> because uh, some of them, they're using their phone, okay, for the Zoom. And Kahoot also requires phone or laptop. Some, they have problems with laptop, but I always tell them, hey, you know what? If you can't do it, like I think as, as, a, as an instructor, we can't be too stringent as well. You know, we can't be too, um, too rigid. You know, we want, we will, even if they couldn't be directly involved, at least they see that we are trying. Um, and then we can we can also prepare an additional manual game for them that they can play in the class. And there is no specific best tools when it comes to involving play, but it is important because we all has experienced how tiring it was to sit and facing the camera a couple of hours in a day and imagine our students from morning until evening you know they they face different classes and it's tiring for them so we don't want to make them feel like you know oh, okay i just have to sit down and just listen i don't want that for them i want them to be active and i always make sure that my class if it's live station which i always often record um is always um never more than an hour so in that one hour i would give a maximum of 15 minutes lecture so and that uh, and before I give a lecture, I always make sure there's a pre, pre reading uh, part for them so that when we do games or when we do like activities online, they already have some sort of a, I would expect them to have a prior knowledge to it. And while they're playing it, even if they have not done their reading, that is when they would know what they don't know. So that in any way, they would still be learning actively instead of just sitting and, and listening to me talking because and sometimes I experience it. I went for a webinar and I sit there and then most of the time I got distracted. <laughs> like I would be looking at the ceiling and everything. So I was thinking to myself, putting myself in my, in my students' shoes. How can I make it more interesting? So there are a few webinars that I attended. They actually in integrate some play, play, uh, play elements into the webinars. You know, like pop quiz out of a sudden. So it makes you, it makes it keeps you awake. You know, it could be as simple as that. You know, so. Yeah, I would say that I think play would be very helpful uh, with the right optimal amount of time that you have set. So it cannot be too long. Yeah. Okay. So 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 that's what I have to say about this this, this segment. Thank you so much, uh, JC and Floriana. Um, what about our friends in Vietnam, uh, Tui and Tom Tom? What, what is your experience with this? Um, are you guys also flipping learning in in the online classes? Mm, okay, so 
Chitri, I'm speaking first, okay? Um, so I, I do believe that play can be used as an approach to teach anytime, not just during the pandemic. And uh, for play here, we mean, we mean the component of play in the curriculum and in the official curriculum, not just like we are doing, like we, we want to have some fun minutes, we want to have some escape, some relaxation. Mm -hmm. And I do believe um, uh, in a way we, when we inter integrate play, we can activate students' uh, skill development much more and their engagement. And when we turn from the offline to the online situation, play is one way to get you know, students engaged, be more interactive, and the lessons becomes more meaningful because um, the students and the teachers both co-create and co-construct the content of the lesson. And now for one thing, uh, normally when we put um, play into uh, teaching, we focus on both the accuracy, the fluency, and we also look at the objectives and the outcomes, not just for fun. Mm -hmm. Everything should be in action or in action and for action. And it is really a teaching process and a learning process that the students can acquire. And one more thing here, um, I, I can say that um, for the lower level students or the primary. So play can be games, can be online games, like we use Kahoot or we use uh, some tools, uh, some online tools for them. And, but for the, for the uh, secondary or high school, play should be in, in the format of gamification uh, and uh, should be, we should have uh, the so-called playful approach yes. rather than just some simple games. So it's not the game, but the game is designed in a way that we can inter, um, we can um, achieve the, um, the meaning and the objectives of the lesson with the content subject, even with uh, some science. So science is very easy, but remember that we also have social sciences or the language lessons. And play is not just for you checking the answers, not just for quizzes. So I agree that you can make it like treasure hunt, escape game or we can make it like a project-based learning that integ integrate in, uh, the play um, items there and um, I, I do believe that we will talk later and we, we have an argument not just for play you know because uh, we believe that play can be an approach it is obvious but during the pandemic we, we mean uh, we, we talk about them the inequality between the students in the remote areas and in the urban areas. We do agree that uh, technology play a role there uh, and the teacher's approach uh, or the teaching approach can play a role there. But for, for us, for our situation and for the, from our observation, we can see something different and it can be a striking um, um, future of um, uh, the pandemic that happens now three so if you go on talking with that thank you so uh, yes i uh, i also i believe that uh, play can be used uh, as a feasible approach to teach during during the pandemic time and um, in in general uh, children spend more time on playing uh, i mean uh, not only the formal, but also the informal uh, class. So, uh, but I think the uh, pandemic affects uh, in different way to the students in the um, whole country. Um, for for students in the um, urban area, like as you know that they um, they have have they are easy to uh, access to uh, the online teaching and the game in the formal teaching. But also they uh, spend more time on like a, a computer game. And, and uh, it's like a, they tend to spend more and more time on computer game rather than uh, uh, doing homework or <laughs> doing other things. But uh, for the uh, student in the um, rural area or the uh, remote area, it is uh, quite different. So um, uh, they, uh, I think um, in uh, rural area, students uh, have more time to like uh, 
uh, uh, discover uh, the nature. And uh, uh, the teacher can, um, how to say, can let them spend more time uh, in the form, uh, in teaching the science, instead of uh, let them uh, uh, just giving uh, some uh, theoretical class, they can let them do like uh, um, something with the uh, um, real tree or uh, they go out and uh, to observe uh, which uh, which plan like uh, which is which plan they uh, uh, learn from the lesson and um, like last time we um, uh, let the student uh, um, in the uh, secondary school they uh, use the full scope uh, to observe the it's like they're very um, curious and uh, uh, exciting because they uh, like um, they discover the new world around. Yeah, you know, so uh, so I think for the student in the rural or remote area, maybe this time is they, they can learn and uh, they come back like, um, how do you say, uh, original uh, way of uh, learning. Yeah. And learning by experiencing, learning by doing, and learning to uh, to be to to live in harmony with nature. And uh, for the first time, we love the nature more, and we learn to how to protect the environment. So yeah. in that way, yeah, yeah, and and that's also the um, thing that we want to um, contribute to the resilient, right? Mm. Thank you. All right, brilliant. Yes. Um. The what what you've been saying, uh, Tui and uh, Tom Tom. It's it's um absolutely true. Um, the way that um our students are, are responding. Yeah. Uh, because we know that interaction is is one of the core things, isn't it, to make sure that learning actually happens, and the thinking process that that goes on while um they interact with us as the teachers and also with them, their, their friends. And, and now because of the pandemic, they can't even meet their friends, you know? So that in a way um, affects the quality of the interaction. And, and I guess through playing, through the, the ability to trial and error, um, their, their ideas yeah? um, in, in a safe um, environment, I think that is uh, key to help them uh, progress, yeah? So I'm I'm wary of the time actually, guys. Um, we have way past um, our one hour mark. Um, I would like to um, call on everyone, if you will, uh, probably just go around and and uh, maybe you can you guys can give a little bit of an advice uh, for teachers who are listening, uh, teachers who are following us um, on this uh, forum, on uh, what are the things that they can uh, do to help. Um, develop at least resilience yeah, in, in, in their students while they're learning online because I think it's, this is going to be for quite a while yeah. the pandemic is not going to go away yet so yeah any advice and perhaps I can start with Aldi again Aldi, <laughs> silakan yeah. <laughs> Thank you Fitri yeah, um, I think that uh, the classroom is still seeing a true education by most Indonesia uh, you know what I mean uh, Indonesian uh, early primary student and parents as well still think that classrooms are real school mm -hmm. and that online classes are less effective. Uh, that's that's our, our perspective. Yeah. People don't think that the online class can help in their children education. So nowadays there are many startups that are engaged in online education, you know, like uh, you say, both say um, and Jay-Z say, uh, we assume that the classroom clusters have an impact on teachers, mm. students and parents everywhere, I think. And uh, I, I remember about one of the foremost teaching of the father of Indonesian educator. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Padli Kihaja Dewan Toro said that everyone becomes a teacher, mm -hmm. every house becomes a school. That is correct, Padli. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we must do and trust as Kihajar Dewantoro said to build a safe and resilient society. Uh, in other hand, uh, in other hand, uh, our current results in case studies, uh, part of ACES project, uh, 
the result said that social support factor and religiosity, religion, I mean, have contributed to increasing social resilience for Indonesian students in, you know, creating a conductive learning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, therefore, it is um, indicated that during the pandemic, uh, our students were able to survive, uh, to keep learning and socializing through social support from family, peers, teachers, and yeah, other communities. And um, student resilience will also, was also supported by social support, um, provided by several uh, kindergarten, uh, like primary school communities in um, Ponorogo. Uh, and then the social and learning resilience of uh, students was also strongly influenced by factor of religious practice, you know, carry out or you know daily by Muslim students, we turn out the lead to their healthy and positive lifestyle. Uh, just for example, the ab ablution activities performed uh, before praying are in accordance with the um, established uh, health protocol by the government as well. So you know always wash the hands to minimize the entry of the virus into the body. Uh, praying attitudes uh, also is able to develop the habit of optimistic thinking and positive thinking in students when struggling during this difficult time of the um, pandemic. And also um, teachers, uh, especially for teachers, must be flexible and more creative in this era. And yeah, uh, for you all, uh, you can check to the, uh, our social media and YouTube channel, uh, mm. Indonesia. <laughs> this promotion. And yeah, uh, we hope uh, providing new insight into transformative models and practice to, you know, stimulate creative thinking, complex problem solving, and yeah, social emotional learning, I think, to address the real world problem in you all. And yeah, of course, with varieties of culture and ethics, uh, you can check reokify.umpo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Terima kasih, LZ. Uh, do you want to add on, Padli? Check. Okay, thank you. So, uh, school, this this quite, I think, to uh, try to have some words to wrap up this meeting in this Indonesia context. So, school closer have limited students' option for, of course, their social interactions. Uh, by investing in social interactions, whether it's through collaboration online, maybe social activities at school or group challenge outdoors, like our uh, in a rural school, we can try to facilitate an environment where they can work on their positive relationship with their peers and their society. After months of online education, this is what they have missed. I have to say, so it is also important to invest in students' emotional well-being. Numbers at our schools in Indonesia so that many students struggle mentally because of the lockdown, of course, even though this problem may partly be solved when schools reopen, but not yet. It is important to know how our students are doing mentally and to offer them professional support if need be. Um, there is not one resilience strategy. Resilience is complex and, of course, interactive. It is a personal and contextual, and our pedagogy should be adapted to the needs of our youth in that specific context. We learn about their needs by engaging in conversation with them and by truly listening, by reflecting critically in our own practice and by being willing to adapt ourselves and change our system in this current pandemic. So access would be the, the one of the solution uh, can be implemented in this current situation. Thank you so much, Vitri. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, our Indonesian friends. Um, your situation is very unique um, because yes. population is huge. Yes. And um, I think uh, these are some of the challenges that, um, you know, we can learn from and, and um, maybe diversify, yeah, in our own uh, local context. Uh, could I invite our Vietnamese uh, partners? 
to have the last say. Um, the what do you think? Um, what will be your advice for the teachers uh, to develop social resilience? Um, so I will say, um, actually, I'm also a teacher, and I think that um, we, we learn to be adaptive, to be transformative. So teachers just try to, we keep fighting, fighting against COVID-19, and we, um, we will, I think we can get over the situation and we can still do our work well. So not just an advice, but something to look um, um, to forward to the future. So that's my last word. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and, and I'd like to add, add on just very short. Uh, uh, please keep keep uh, in mind like uh, you are an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. you just keep moving and moving and, and uh, create the way uh, on your own. Yeah, because teachers, I think, is is um, the ones that motivate, isn't it? They, they are the core to uh, make learning happen. So that's why we need to keep moving on. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Um, Floriana and JC, do you want to come in? Well, um, so I'll keep it simple. Um, like in my last word is that uh, all throughout uh, this whole thing, even after this pandemic is over, I think resilience is it's very important and I think play uh, should be embedded in if can if can possible to be embedded in our in, in our lesson um, like learning can always be fun okay and it is all up to us to make learning fun and once we have chosen this profession it means that we are we are we are we're in the game and we are ready to help no matter how small we think that you know our contribution is towards the education field and i just want uh, all these educators out there to know that we can make a difference each one of us can make a difference and whether we have a pandemic or not i think in a continuous improvement we should always focus on that and with that uh thank you take care and stay safe thank you so much jc yeah yeah. Uh, just one last thing is we human are social beings. I think a lot of interaction are needed uh, between teachers, between students. I think th let's not forget that we are all in the same uh, problem, but we have one another to support one another. So do not be scared to contact your fellow teachers or fellow researchers. And also, I think one thing that uh, we as educators, we have forgotten because we focus so much on the content and the lesson. We forgot to even ask our students how they are. Understand the students, be empathetical with the students. You know, ask them if they are happy, if they are sad, go in their mind, in their life. Then maybe that way learning will be seen differently in their views. Okay? Yeah. yeah, very nice. Yeah, thank you so much, JC. I think I think that really wraps up the um, you know what what we are trying to achieve through ACES as well. Uh, we focus on empathetic um, approach, yeah, um, in in learning, and we hope that uh, people will at least try um, to put. Maslow before Bloom, <laughs> you know. So yeah, to 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 think about the humanistic um, side of um, learning first. But uh, my final advice uh, to teachers out there who are listening to us today is that um, take care of yourself first. Yeah, take care of yourself first. Sometimes as educators, we tend to um, overburden ourselves and we forget that if uh, we are uh, not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of other people. So um, with that, I think um, thank you so much to all our panel, our wonderful people that have joined us today. Um, Toy, Tom, Tom, uh, Floriana, JC, Aldi and uh, Fadli. Yeah, and um, we hope that you will uh, stay tuned um, to and, and also to uh, log in to our uh, website, uh, G Changes um, 
www.ulmatrix.org where we put all of our materials on there. Um, if you are interested to um, participate as uh, part of our uh, work, you can always get in touch with any one of us um, in Vietnam or in Malaysia or Indonesia, or you can even go to any, you know, any of our sites really. But the main, um, uh, what do you call it? The main focus that we want to um, get at is to um, try to implement a playful um, approach. Yeah, through um, through the playful approach, we will hopefully develop social resilience so thank you very much and uh, we hope to hear again from you soon bye everyone bye, bye everyone bye. thank bye. you terima kasih terima kasih